Hi, welcome to The Hot End. My name is Eagle and I'm the newest addition to the team. So hopefully you enjoy my videos. Today I'm going, looking at reviewing the Anet A8. All right, welcome back. Now, doing the review of the A8, I've had this machine now for about three months. Uh, as far as printing is concerned, look, I've had no issues with this at all. Uh, had it leveled, had it running. I've obviously done a lot of printing over three months, several rolls worth. Uh, I'm mainly printing PLA, so I can't really give you a good review as far as ABS is concerned. Uh, I have run, I think about three prints in ABS and not a problem in the world. Myself, uh, I use Captain Tape on the bed. Now the bed itself is 220 by 220 and this is probably leads to my first con as far as this printer is concerned. Uh, when you want to level it, the screws are actually on the top. You can't just tighten the wing nuts because uh, the screw goes through the blade into the base and then it just has a securing wing nut but that's threaded. So the only way to actually level the bed, if you like me and use captain tape, is to peel back the, the captain tape so you can access the screws. Uh, if you're using a glass bed, that's even worse because again, you've got to keep sliding it forward and back. Again, it's neither here nor there as far as real big concerns are because there are ways around it. Um, one is to what, do what I've done here, uh, which is I've installed the Tronxy proximity sensor. So once the bed was level, I've popped this on. Now I've only had this running for about a month now. Uh, and to get this running, I've flashed the firmware with Skynet 2.3.2. .2. Now that's available on their Facebook group. We'll have a link down in the bottom, uh, just below the video. Now once the bed was level, use that. Never had a problem since. I'm actually, one of my next updates is going to be to remove the screws altogether and have it permanently permanently set at a certain height so that I can just hit print and not worry about it. The trunks will take care of everything else. Uh, now that's the only update I've done on this printer. Everything else is stock. These are printed parts. That's the only printed part on the machine. The rest of it is Acrylic and it's quite rigid. I mean, it's it's very hard to throw this out or move it. There's very little movement, which is fantastic. If you're going to stiffen anything up, you can download stiffeners that can be attached to the front and the rear of the printer. I haven't done these because I haven't had need. Uh, one of the only other upgrades that I have planned for this printer is you can get a cover to cover the board. Now the board is exposed here on the side, which I'm not too keen on myself. Uh, it just needs a decent printed board, basically a cover, which there are plenty available on Thingiverse. Um, so that's, that's my plan for the future. Outside of that, I really haven't had to do anything to the printer. It's for the price this printer is on Gearbest, and I'll tell you the price, but I'd rather you click the link down the bottom to see. Uh, this printer, I was expecting a hell of a lot less. The only other cheap printer that I actually have is a Cossel Mini. Uh, it's the brand is FL Sun. Now, I'm not familiar with Deltas, but if all Deltas are as troublesome as that printer has been, I am staying away from Deltas. I know the, the little monster from TiVo has got fantastic reviews. So yeah, I love this printer and I highly urge you to pick one up if you're interested in a Delta style printer or even a printer that prints large. So maybe I just got a bad Delta. <laughs> that and I don't know how to use them because most of my printers are either i3s or Cartesians. Uh, now on that note, I'll give you a bit of background on me. I've got, currently I've got five printers. I've got, my very first printer was a CTC Bizer, which is a dual head printer. Uh, 
I got that because it was the cheapest one at the market when I first got into it, which was $580, I believe it was, Australian. Uh, now, that's been a great printer. Um, took a lot of tweaking to get to be a great printer, but it's been fantastic. Uh, outside of that, I've got the CR10. Now the CR10, God, I think it took me 10 minutes to assemble it. Uh, I was printing roughly five minutes after that. Uh, I imported it through, I just sliced up in Simplify 3D. It had a profile in it. Used the stock print profile and sliced, put the SD in, hit print, and the CR10 has been a workhorse ever since. It's printing 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, now, other than that, I've got the Costle Mini. I've also got a Black Widow that I'm going to be doing a review on soon. Uh, now, the Black Widow I've got is the one that was recently videoed. And the plans for that is, you've seen the unboxing video. My plan is to uh, go through the TiVo community on Facebook. I'm getting a list of the, all the recommended updates for it, all the mods, and I'm gonna throw them all on, throw everything against it, and try and turn that so-so printer into a beast. Uh, I, I like to tweak, and that's why they've given it over to me. Anthony is not so much a tweaker. He's great at what he does, but he doesn't like to muck around, so he just wants to get in and get the job done. Do it! Just do it! Whereas me, I like to play around with printers, as you can see by the Tronxy and this and that. So, anyway, that's, that's a little bit about me. Now, back to this. I can't think of any more negatives. It's that simple. It's... For its price, this is an unbelievable printer. I, I'm flabbergasted. I m print 90% of the time I, I will print PLA. Now I print at two millimeter layer heights, uh, 0.2 millimeters of course. Uh, generally, because I'm a bit impatient, almost all of my prints are done at 90 millimeters a second. That's on all of my printers regardless. It's just a print speed I'm happy printing it. And I'll show you a couple of samples here. Now I'll just move this one out the way. Here's one of the prints that I've done with this. Now this is using blue printed purple PLA. Uh, now it's 0.4 millimeter nozzle, which comes with it. I actually haven't had to change the nozzle from the stock nozzle. So it's got an 0.4, 0.2 millimeter layer heights and printed at 90 millimeters a second. Now, there are some vibration lines. I don't know if the light will pick it up, but either way, I'll do a close-up handheld video shortly. It does have some vibration lines, but again, I haven't put vibration dampeners, I haven't put stiffeners, so that's expected at those speeds. Uh, but they are minimal, absolutely minimal. Uh, it works as it's intended. I've had to do no cleaning on this. I literally popped it off the printer, assembled it, and I've actually used this vise. Now, this vise is available on Thingiverse. Uh, it is, I think it's just, the name of the item is actually another vise. <laughs> so, because there are quite a few vices on Thingiverse. Uh, I've used this in machining. I have replaced some bearings on my CTC. They were a little bit too long. So, and they're the Igus plastic bearings. So, the composite bearings. I've popped them in this and run it through with an angle grinder to cut them down to size. Not a problem at all. Held nice and tight, didn't warp, didn't move. So a great print this one and very handy tool to have around the house. All right. Now this is something else that I've printed off it. The hand is actually being printed on the CR10. Now this was for my Comic-Con costume. I went as the Silence from Doctor Who. The whole idea was print off these hands. I have the head in storage at the moment and it wasn't printed on the AA, so I'm not gonna bother showing it today. But the whole point is the hands were printed on, this, on the CR10. 
The base here was printed completely on the A8. The toggles, the handle, this actually goes through all the way into the hand and actually has a magnet hole here. Again, I'll link to the design of this one on Thingiverse, but works perfectly and was great for my costume. The whole idea was when people saw me, I closed the hand. So, but yeah, the toggles came out great. Everything's great, no holes. This has only got, I think 10% infill. My settings that I tend to use is five bottom layers, 10 top layers, and three perimeters. Uh, that's just on the four, four mil nozzle. nozzle. Uh, again, really depends on the output I'm hoping for, but I didn't need any better than that. So that's how I set it up. Again, fun little print. So yeah, that's about it. I can't really think of any more pros and cons about the printer other than for the money, buy it. And even if you just want something to tinker with, uh, for the money, for the cost that this printer is, I, I can't say too many negative things about it. I'm going to mod the heck out of it shortly. Just because it costs me so little money, why not? If I break it, I don't care because it was so cheap. So, if you liked the video, don't forget to hit subscribe, hit the bell to get some updates, and I'll hope to see you in future videos. My future plans are, as I said, the Black Widow. I'm also a smoker and I plan on quitting smoking, so I'm gonna move from smoking to vape. Never done it before, never so much as had a pull on a vape, so I'll probably review that. But outside of that, hope to see you soon.